Hello everyone. In this video we will go through the exam questions related to AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner 2022 along with their quick explanation. So, let's get started. Let's talk about first question. Which service can be used to provision a logically isolated section in the AWS Cloud? Options, we have A. AWS Cloud Formation B. AWS Elastic Beanstalk C. AWS VPCD, AWS Cloud, watch. Correct answer for this question is option C, that is AWS VPC. Because VPCs lets you provision a logically isolated section of the AWS Cloud where you can launch AWS resources. Let's talk about next questions. How do you encrypt CloudTrail logs? Options, we have. A. Enable KMS encryption. B. Enable encryption. C. Send all logs to S3 and enable server-side encryption. D. No action is needed since they are automatically encrypted. Correct answer for this question is option D because By default, logs files are encrypted using server-side encryption with S3 managed encryption keys. Let's talk about next questions. What AWS managed database provides processing power that is up to 5 times faster than a traditional MySQL database? Options, we have A. MariaDB B. RDSC DynamoDB D. Aurora Correct answer for this question is option D, that is Aurora because Aurora is a fully managed MySQL and PostgreSQL relational database that delivers up to 5x the throughput of MySQL. Let's talk about next questions what AWS service allows for distribution of incoming application traffic across multiple EC2 instances? Options, we have A. ELBB Inspector C. EC2D. Auto Scaling. Correct answer for this question is option A, ELB because ELB distributes incoming traffic across multiple EC2 instances in multiple OSs. Let's talk about next questions. What two encryption key options are available in the AWS Web Console when you are uploading a new object with the S3 Upload Wizard? Options we have A. AWS KMS Stored Customer Key B. AWS Key Management Service Key, SSE KMS, C Customer Key D. Amazon S3 Key, SSE S3. Correct answers for this question are option B and option D. The two encryption key options are available in the AWS Web Console when you are uploading a new object with the Upload Wizard or or change encryption for existing object are the Amazon S3 Master Key and the AWS KMS Master Key options. Let's talk about next questions. Which of the following is not a disaster recovery deployment technique? Options we have A. Pilot Light B. Backup and Restore C. Warm standby. D. Single site. E. Multi site. Correct answer for this question is option D because there is no such solution available. Let's talk about next questions. Which of the following statements regarding auto scaling is most accurate? Options we have A. Increases the size of the EC2 instance based on demand. B. Scales out resources based on demand. C. Distributes traffic to multiple EC2 or RDS instances. D. Distributes traffic across multiple regions. Correct answer for this question is option B because auto scaling automatically adjusts the capacity to maintain performance across multiple resources. Let's talk about next questions. What is AWS's preferred NoSQL database? Options we have A. MySQL. B. Oracle. C. DynamoDB. D. RDS. Correct answer for this question is option C, that is DynamoDB. Because, Amazon DynamoDB is a key value in document database that delivers single-digit millisecond performance at any scale. It's a fully managed, multi-region, multi-master database with built-in security, backup and restore, and in-memory caching for internet scale applications. Let's talk about next questions. Which of the following is a document that provides a formal statement of permissions in AWS? Options, we have A. Group B. Inline role C. Role D. 
Policy. Correct answer for this question is option D, that is policy. Because, a policy is a JSON document that specifies what an AWS user is allowed to do. It is attached to a user and defines that user's permissions. Let's talk about next questions. Which statements below are correct regarding scalability? Options, we have. A. A scalable system distributes traffic to instances with the least load. B. A scalable system distributes traffic to instances with the highest capacity. C. A scalable system distributes traffic based on demand. D. A scalable system diverts traffic to multiple regions. Correct answer for this question is option C because scalability scales up with an increased number of instances and scales down automatically based on demand, as well as diverts traffic to the instances with the least load. Let's talk about next questions. Disaster recovery strategies should be ideally based on launching resources in a separate Options, we have A. Security Group B. Region C. VPC D. EC2 Correct answer for this question is option B, that is region. Because regions are placed all around the world to provide cloud-based disaster recovery services that enable rapid recovery of your infrastructure and data. Let's talk about next questions. Your company created an incident response plan six months ago that has been in regular use without any updates to the plan itself. Of the following statements, which is true? Options, we have. A. The response plan would not include any new services that may have been created. B. The plan is secure, and no action is needed. C. The plan is too heavy on security controls. D. The plan is not implemented on a scheduled basis. Correct answer for this question is option A, because your incident response plan not only needs to be used, it also needs to be updated with new services. Let's talk about next questions. Which disaster recovery option below has the highest downtime? Options, we have A. Pilot light B. Multi-site C. Warm standby D. Backup and restore Correct answer for this question is option D, that is backup and restore. Because, since most environments back up data to tape and then send the tapes off-site, it can take a longer time to restore your systems. Let's talk about next questions. What service would be most useful in a disaster recovery situation? Options, we have. A. AWS Guard Duty. B. AWS S3 Transfer Acceleration. C. AWS EC2. D. Route 53. Correct answer for this question is option D, that Route 53. Because when you have more than one resource performing the same function. For example, more than one HTTP server or mail server. You can configure Amazon Route 53 to check the health of your resources and respond to DNS queries using only the healthy resources. So Route 53 is most useful in a disaster recovery situation. Let's talk about next questions. You have a dedicated web servers and database that remains largely idle but sometimes has huge spikes in activity. What can you architect to improve your cost efficiency? Options, we have. A. Configure RDS Multi-OS for performance optimization. B. Use an elastic load balancer between your server and database. C. Migrate the web servers to EC2 spot instances. D. Configure serverless architecture leveraging Lambda. Correct answer for this question is option D. Because using Lambda will remove the need to run dedicated web servers for the organization, and there will be no charge when services are not running that will save costs for your organization. Let's talk about next questions. Edge locations have which of the following features? Options, we have. A. Distribute content to users B. Distributes content across multiple AWS resources C. Cache common content D. Used with CloudFront Correct answer for this question is option A, C, and option D. Because edge locations are used along with CloudFront. Also, edge locations are used to cache objects and used to deliver content quickly to your users. Let's talk about next questions. Which AWS service would you use to send alerts based on CloudWatch alarms? Options, we have. 
A, SWFB, SQSC, SNSD. SES correct answer for this question is option C, that is SNS. Because CloudWatch alarms can use an EC2 action, an auto-scaling action, or a notification sent to an SNS, AWS Simple Notification Service. Let's talk about next questions. Which AWS service gives you full administrative privilege of the underlying virtual infrastructure? Options, we have A. EC2 B. Lambda C. S3 D. DynamoDB Correct answer for this question is option A, that is EC2. Because, you have control over the EC2 underlying virtual infrastructure, all other services are managed by AWS as serverless components. Let's talk about next questions. You want to use your customer keys generated by KMS in the U.S. East region for each of the regions in your AWS environment. How can you do this? Options, we have A. UCCR, cross-region replication B. Use S3 C. Use the KMS rotation feature D. This is underscore not underscore possible because KMS keys are region-specific. Correct answer for this question is option D. Because KMS keys are region-specific and can only be used in the region they are created. Let's talk about next questions. Which option below cannot be used with your AWS services in a programmatic way? Options, we have A. PowerShell B. AWS Management Console C. Bash D. CLI Correct answer for this question is option B, that is AWS Management Console. AWS Management Console cannot be used with AWS services in a programmatic manner. Let's talk about next questions. Which feature allows you to associate security features with a subnet inside your VPC to protect your environment from incoming traffic requests? Options, we have A. AWS Inspector B. Security Groups C. AWS Guard, Duty D. NACLs Correct answer for this question is option D, that is NACLs. Because a network access control list, NACL, is an optional layer of security for your VPC that acts as a firewall for controlling traffic in and out of one or more subnets. You might set up NACLs with rules like your security groups in order to add an additional layer of security to your VPC. Let's talk about next questions. What would you do to take a backup of your EBS volume? Options, we have A. Store the EBS volume in an S3 bucket. B. Create an EBS snapshot. C. Store the EBS volume in an RDS database. D. Store the EBS volume in a DynamoDB table. Correct answer for this question is option B. That is create an EBS snapshot. Because you can back up the data on your Amazon EBS volumes to Amazon S3 by taking point-in-time snapshots. Snapshots are incremental backups, which means only the blocks on the device that have changed after your most recent snapshot are saved. This minimizes the time required to create the snapshot and saves on storage costs by not duplicating data. When you delete a snapshot, only the data unique to that snapshot is removed. Let's talk about next questions. What AWS service is a fully managed petabyte scale data warehouse service in AWS? Options, we have A. Aurora B. Redshift C. Athena D. DynamoDB Correct answer for this question is option B, that is Redshift. Because Redshift is a fully managed petabyte scale data warehouse, you can start with just a few hundred gigabytes of data and scale to a petabyte or more. Let's talk about next questions. Your company has asked you to architect a new two-tier highly available web application in your AWS environment. The application needs a storage layer to store the artifacts, photos, videos, etc., and needs to be cost-efficient. Which service below is the best choice? Options, we have A. EBS Volume B. EC2 C. RDS D. S3 Correct answer for this question is option D, that is S3. Because S3 is AWS's default storage service that provides durable storage for all static content. 
S3 provides object level storage. Let's talk about next questions. Which AWS service allows you to increase the number of resources based on demand of the application or the users? Options, we have A. AWS ELBB AWS Inspector C AWS Auto Scaling D AWS Launch Configuration Correct answer for this question is option C, that is AWS Auto Scaling. Because AWS Auto Scaling monitors your applications and automatically adjusts capacity to maintain steady, predictable performance at the lowest possible cost. Auto Scaling makes recommendations that allow you to optimize performance, costs, or balance between them. Let's talk about next questions. Which AWS service is best as a global content delivery network, CDN, service? Options, we have A. Cloud, Trail B. CloudFront C. Route 53 D. S3 Correct answer for this question is option B, because CloudFront is a web service that business and web application developers use as an easy and cost-effective way to distribute content with low latency and high data transfer speeds. Let's talk about next questions. What is AWS's domain name system? Options, we have A. Direct Connect B. AWS SESC Route 53 D. VPN Correct answer for this question is option C, that is Route 53. Because, Amazon Route 53 is a highly available and scalable cloud DNS web service. It is designed to give developers and businesses an extremely reliable and cost-effective way to route end-users to internet applications by translating names into numeric IP addresses. Let's talk about next questions. Which storage option is best suited for storing large quantities of archived documents? Options, we have A. S3 B. Glacier C. EBS Snapshots D. EBS Volumes Correct answer for this question is option B, because Glacier is a secure, durable, and low-cost storage service for data archiving or long-term backups. Let's talk about next questions. Which AWS service can identify a specific user that made an API call to terminate your EC2 instance? Options, we have A. I am B. Cloud. Trail C. Cloud. Watch D. X-Ray Correct answer for this question is option B, that is CloudTrail, because AWS CloudTrail is a service that enables governance, compliance, operational auditing, and risk auditing of your AWS account. With CloudTrail, you can log, continuously monitor, and retain account activity related to actions across your AWS infrastructure. Let's talk about next questions. In the AWS Shared Responsibility Model, which of the following examples are the responsibility of AWS? Options, we have A. Securing edge locations B. Encrypting data C. Decommissioning media D. I am password policies Correct answers for this question are option A that is securing edge locations and option C, that is decommissioning media, because it is AWS's responsibility to decommission the media and also, to secure edge locations. Let's talk about next questions. With AWS Relational Database Service, RDS, which of the following are you responsible for? A. Operating System Installation and Patching B. Scaling C. Database Backups D. Database Software Installation and Patching E. The optimization of your application using RDS F all of these. Correct answer for this question is option E. Because you are responsible only for the optimization of your application that uses RDS, AWS will take care of the rest as this is considered a managed service. Let's talk about next questions. Which of the following AWS support plans provide access to online self-paced labs for training staff? A. Enterprise B. Business C. Basic D. Developer Correct answer for this question is option A, that is enterprise. Because only the enterprise support plan provides access to online self-paced labs. Let's talk about next questions. Which of the following are valid EC2 pricing options? A. Global 
B. Enterprise. C. Reserved. D. On demand. Correct answers for this question are option C and option D. Because on demand, where you pay for the resources you have used at the end of the billing period and reserved, where you commit to paying a certain amount every billing period for a length of time no matter if you use them or not, are the valid EC2 pricing options. Let's talk about next questions. Which of the following Amazon EC2 pricing models automatically adjusts charges as your usage changes? A. Dedicated hosts. B. On demand. C. Savings plan. D. Reserved instances. Correct answer for this question is option C, that is saving plans. Because savings plans is the only Amazon EC2 pricing model that provides the flexibility of adjusting charges depending on the amount of usage, thereby saving money in the process. Let's talk about next questions. Which of the following terms applies to EC2 instances that have the ability to burst above the baseline level of their CPU performance? A. Compute optimized. B. Fixed performance. C. General purpose. D. Memory optimized. E. Burstable performance. Correct answer for this question is option E, that is burstable performance. Because burstable performance EC2 instances are able to burst above the baseline level of their CPU performance. There are general purpose, compute optimized, and memory optimized EC2 instances that have this feature. This is in contrast with fixed performance ones, which are set within their performance parameters. Let's talk about next questions. Which of the following AWS Trusted Advisor Best Practice Checks involves using Amazon CloudFront to accelerate data transfer from S3 buckets? A. Security. B. Cost Optimization. C. Performance. D. Service Limits. Correct answer for this question is option C, that is performance, because by using Amazon CloudFront, Requests for content in S3 buckets are automatically routed to the nearest edge location where content is cached. Consequently, data transfer is accelerated, ultimately improving performance. Let's talk about next questions. Which of the following support plans features a less than 4-hour response time in the event of an impaired production system and more cost-effective? A. Developer B. Basic C. Business D. Individual. Correct answer for this question is option C. Both the business and enterprise support levels offer a less than 4 hour response time in the event of an impaired production system. Developer is less than 12 hour response time in case of any system impairment. Basic does not offer any support for system impairment. Individual is not a real support plan. Let's talk about next questions. Upon which of these measurements is AWS Lambda pricing based? A. Number of requests. B. Duration. C. Memory. D. Data transfer. Correct answers for this question are option A and option B. With AWS Lambda, you are charged based on the number of requests for your functions and the amount of time, duration, it takes for your code to execute. Let's talk about next questions. In order to comply with regulatory mandates, some of your data needs to be retained in perpetuity. Which of the following AWS storage services offers low-cost, long-term data archival? A. Glacier B. Redshift C. S3 D. EFS Correct answer for this question is option A. Because Glacier is your best choice for deeply discounted, long-term object archival, as long as the data does not need to be available and online at a moment's notice. Let's talk about next questions. Your project manager needs to know the daily spend of the company's AWS account over the last 60 days to consider creating and implementing cost-effective measures. What should you do? A. Direct him to daily spend view in AWS Cost Explorer. B. Direct him to monthly spend by linked account view in AWS Cost Explorer. C. Direct him to monthly spend by service view in AWS Cost Explorer. D. Direct him to AWS Budgets. Correct answer for this question is option A. Because Cost Explorer provides a trio of pre-configured views designed to quickly get you to common spends in your AWS environment. For viewing the daily spend over the last 60 days, 
your project manager needs to click the daily spend view link. A. WS budgets is for generating automatic alerts when your AWS costs or usage exceed, or are forecasted to exceed, the thresholds you set. It is not for tracking your spend. Let's talk about next questions. Which of the following best describes a resource group? A. A resource group is a collection of resources of the same type, EC2, S3, etc., that are deployed in the same availability zone. B. A resource group is a collection of resources that share one or more tags, or portions of tags. C. A resource group is a collection of resources of the same type, EC2, S3, etc., that share one or more tags or portions of tags. D. A resource group is a collection of resources that are deployed in the same availability zone. Correct answer for this question is option B. Because a resource group is a collection of resources that share one or more tags. Let's talk about next questions. Which of the following enables you to interact with AWS services using only textual commands? A. AWS Management Console. B. AWS CLI. C. Amazon API Gateway. D. AWS SDK. Correct answer for this question is option B, that is AWS CLI. Because CLI stands for Command Line Interface, which is the open source tool used for executing tasks in AWS by typing and entering textual commands. Let's talk about next questions. Which of the following types of EC2 instances is ideal for workloads that process large data sets in memory? A. Compute optimized. B. Accelerated computing. C. Memory optimized. D. General purpose. E. Storage optimized. Correct answer for this question is option C, that is memory optimized. Because memory optimized instances are specifically for workloads that require more memory than usual to process data. Let's talk about next questions. Which of the following is not a compute service? A. EC2B. Elastic Block Store C Lambda D. Elastic Beanstalk. Correct answer for this question is option B, that is EBS. Because Elastic Block Store is a storage service, all others are compute services. Let's talk about next questions. Which Elastic Load Balancer type would be best suited to help you host a website? A. Application B Network C. Web D. Classic. Correct answer for this question is option A, that is application. Because there is no web load balancer in AWS. Instead, the application load balancer fills this need. It is not recommended to use classic load balancers and more of these have been superseded, and a network load balancer is not right for this case. Let's talk about next questions. Which of the following types of AWS accounts have access to AWS Trusted Advisor? A. Basic B. Business and Enterprise C. Basic, Developer, Business, and Enterprise D. Basic and Developer E. Developer, Business, and Enterprise F. Basic, Professional, Developer, Business, and Enterprise. Correct answer for this question is option C. Because all of the AWS accounts have access to AWS Trusted Advisor. Let's talk about next questions. Which of the following is AWS Data Warehousing Service? A. Snowball B. S3 Big Data C. Redshift D Elastic Map Reduce. Correct answer for this question is option C, that is Redshift. Because Redshift is AWS Data Warehousing Service. Let's talk about next questions. Which of the following accurately describes the function of the AWS Cost Explorer? A. The AWS Cost Explorer is a tool for consolidating billing between multiple AWS accounts. B. The AWS Cost Explorer is used to estimate the anticipated AWS bill. C. The AWS Cost Explorer is a free, easy-to-use tool that allows for viewing charts and usage history in order to manage AWS costs over time. D. The AWS Cost Explorer is a free tool that allows for an estimation of the cost savings to be had by migrating to the AWS cloud from an on-premises data center. Correct answer for this question is option C. Because, the AWS Cost Explorer is an easy-to-use interface that lets you visualize, understand, and manage your AWS costs and usage over time. 
Let's talk about next questions. You need to host a file in a location that's publicly accessible from anywhere in the world. Which AWS service would best meet that need? A. EBSB. RDS. C. S3. D. EC2. Correct answer for this question is option C, that is S3. Because with S3, objects can be accessed from anywhere in the world via a dedicated URL. Let's talk about next questions. Which of the following AWS services can assist you with cost optimization? A. AWS Inspector. B. AWS Shield. C. AWS WAF. D. AWS Trusted Advisor. Correct answer for this question is option D, that is AWS Trusted Advisor. Because Trusted Advisor can assist you with the cost optimization of your AWS environment. Let's talk about next questions. Once you exceed a usage percentage of free tier limits for any service, AWS will automatically send you an email notification. What is that percentage? A. 35 B. 85 C. 75 D. 50 Correct answer for this question is option B. If you exceed 85% of free tier usage, AWS will automatically send you an email to notify you. This is to alert you to help with staying within the free tier limits, otherwise, you may incur charges. Let's talk about next questions. To stay within the AWS free tier using Amazon EC2 for the first 12 months of having an AWS account, which of the following instance types should you use? A. T3.medium B. M5.medium C. T2.micro D. T2.small Correct answer for this question is option C, that is T2 micros. Because one of the EC2 requirements for staying within the AWS free tier is using EC2 micro instances only. While the other instance types can be cheap, only T2.micro is eligible for free tier usage. Let's talk about next questions. In regard to AWS organizations, which of the following is true? A. AWS organizations do not provide consolidated billing for multiple AWS accounts. B. AWS organizations provides policy-based management for multiple AWS accounts. C. AWS organizations do not enable centrally managing the use of AWS services. D. AWS organizations do not enable centrally managing policies across multiple AWS accounts. Correct answer for this question is option B. The QAs. AWS organizations do indeed provide policy-based management for multiple AWS accounts. Let's talk about next questions. You have a project that will require 90 hours of computing time. There is no deadline, and the work can be stopped and restarted without adverse effect. Which of the following computing options offers the most cost-effective solution? A. Reserved instances. B. ECS instances. C. On-demand instances. D. Spot instances. Correct answer for this question is option D. Because. Spot instances would be the most cost-effective solution. Let's talk about next questions. Which of the following pricing models are available for Amazon RDS? A. Dedicated server. B. On-demand. C. Reserved. D. Spot. Correct answers for this question are option B and option C. Because you can pay for Amazon RDS using either on-demand or reserved instance pricing. Let's talk about next questions. Which of the following are valid EC2 pricing options? A. Stop. B. Reserved. C. On-demand. D. Enterprise. Correct answers for this question are option B and option C. Because on-demand and reserved are the valid EC2 pricing options. Let's talk about next questions. Which of the following types of AWS accounts have access to AWS Personal Health Dashboard? Please select the most appropriate answer. A. Basic, Developer, Business, and Enterprise B. Basic C. Basic, Developer, Business, Business E and Enterprise D. Basic and Developer E. Developer, Business, and Enterprise F. Business and Enterprise. Correct answer for this question is option A. 
because all of AWS accounts have access to AWS Personal Health Dashboard. Let's talk about next questions. Which of the following type of AWS account receives the highest priority access to customer service and technical support? A. Developer B. Enterprise C. Business D. Basic. Correct answer for this question is option B. Because enterprise accounts have the highest priority of access to customer service and technical support. Let's talk about next questions. Your development team uses four on-demand EC2 instances, and your QA team has five reserved instances, only three of which are being used. Assuming all AWS accounts are under a single AWS organization, how will the development team's instances be billed? A. The dev team will be billed for two instances at on-demand prices and two instances at the reserved instance price. B. All the dev instances will be billed at the reserved instance rate. C. All the dev team's instances will be billed at the on-demand rate. D. The pricing for the reserved instances will shift from QA to dev. Correct answer for this question is option A. Because, assuming all instances are in the same AWS organization, the reserved instance pricing for the unused QA instances will be applied to two of the four dev instances. Let's talk about next questions. By default, what is the maximum number of linked accounts per paying account under consolidated billing? A. 10 B. 100 C. 20 D. 50 Correct answer for this question is option C. Because The default maximum is 20 linked accounts. This soft limit can be increased by contacting AWS. Thank you for watching. I hope you like the content of this video and find it helpful for your exam preparation. If yes, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe.